Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fridays at Five. I'm Karen Taylor of the Color Vowel Chart here with my co author, Shirley Thompson of the Color Vowel Chart. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> uh, today's topic is learner engagement. And I you wanted to put that out there. We, we know that's a popular term these days, especially since we've done so much online teaching and the black box phenomenon and wishing we could engage learners to show up, that kind of thing. Um, but let's go ahead and just have, we're gonna start with a discussion about what learner engagement means to each of us so that we can kind of focus in on what we want to do more of. Um, and here I'm thinking, yes, in the lesson, and we provide a lot of strategies and we use a lot of those in, in color vowel, but also beyond the classroom. You know, what do we really want learners to think about, feel, consider outside of the classroom related to their learning? So I thought I'd just open that up to the floor. And I'm so glad we have Skip joining us. He's coming into the room now uh, because he's representing, I think, a unique uh, population. Um, oh, no, sorry. Skipjack is not Skip. Skipjack is Lisa. So hi, Lisa. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, calling in for New Zealand. Um, that was so Whoa. funny. That was a, a, a mistake of names. But um, so we have we have folks from all over the world today. Uh, we have New Zealand, Brazil, Japan, all over the US, Canada, uh, lots of places. Uh, so what does learner engagement mean to you? And um, I'll, I'll start with Aviva, just briefly, Aviva, uh, because you've been thinking about it this week, I know. She's gonna be speaking in a few minutes. And then we'll, we'll just pass it around from there, okay? Aviva, what are you thinking about? I think for me, learner engagement means um, critical thinking, independent thinking, um, and use of the tools that we provide um, to further to further their learning by themselves independently. And I hope that, that we'll see a little bit of that later on when Chris and I talk about it. Yeah. And so, so Aviva is a director of the International Language Institute. Is that what that's called? I'm the academic director of the Intensive English Institute at uh, Florida Atlantic University. There we go. ILI is what I know it as. ILI. Um, thank you, Aviva. And, and so if I hear you, you're describing it kind of as an engagement, a learner's engagement with their own life, sort of what they need to move forward with. Okay, great. Thank you. Other ideas of learner engagement? And we can relate it to classroom teaching face-to-face. -face. You can relate it to the moment of online teaching. We can go big or we can go micro with it. So just other ways that you think of it, or, or when you say, I want to increase learner engagement, what does that really mean to you? Jennifer? It, it, to me, it ties to that idea of willingness to communicate and um, overcoming hesitancies that students might have about, you know, not just talking in class, but really communicating with each other and, and with you. And, um, you know, being, taking those uh, brave steps to really uh, um, being able to express what's going on inside of them about their lives, about uh, and, and finding those uh, words that they need and communicating also uh, wh where those gaps are. We all need to find where those gaps are and they need to discover their gaps in their, in their abilities and skills and levels. So that, that to me is, is what it, it means. Great. Right. Hi, Carrie. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was listening to a previous Friday at five and you were talking about some things. You know how you refer to that term stickiness with your chance. And I love how you started to use the word compelling, mm. because to me, this is something that's really lacking. And I think when you mentioned Karen, that as teachers, you know, teachers, we talk too much. We need to come up with ways for our students to not only use the language, but practice more. And I love that word, you know, compelling. In other words, is what we're giving students, is it internally motivating to the point where they're going to go off and practice even without us being present, without us 
giving them an exam without a bunch of reward charts or reinforcements. And that is, what would it take to internalize, you know, kind of like those musicians who practice, practice, practice beyond what the teacher is expecting because, you know, they love it or they, they notice that they're improving. So to me, I, I think that this is such um, a void right now. You know, I think a lot of people are doing the absolute minimum, but not because they're compelled. So mm. I love that term. Mm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big order. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with everything you said. I mean, we just started our classes and and uh, I can always tell at the beginning of the class, I can tell my type A personalities from my type B personalities. And let me tell you, my type A's are much more compelling. <laughs> and there's there's two problems there is sometimes I have to shut them up so the other people can talk. <laughs> so it's, so it's, uh, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I, I also found that um, I have have had a lot of luck with WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp and I get them on a WhatsApp group to start with. And for this, for some reason, this group that I just started, they they're messaging me at 10 o'clock at night. They're asking questions there. And, and the nice thing about that is that the WhatsApp goes out to the whole group. Yeah. So the others, the, the others will chime in when there's a question. There. It's, kind of, it's really kind of interesting how that's worked out for me. I'm Are trying to get them to, to, I'm trying to get them to pick up the blue canoe. Uh, I wanted to start them on the free version, but they're having trouble figuring out how to get the free version on their phones. So I'm going to have to work with them a little bit on that one. Yeah. Yeah. With different levels of tech literacy, these kinds of things can be in the way, but starting with WhatsApp is really brilliant, Doug. Um, yeah. If anybody's not familiar, anybody not familiar with WhatsApp? It is okay, good. Well, for anybody listening to the recording, it's, it really is not just one of many options. I would say it is the, the center, what would you say? It's the most central app that many of our learners, adult learners use to communicate with their families around the world. And so it's not just about choosing a, well, A, a tool they already know, but for me, it's getting back to Carrie's point, it's a tool that's intimate. It already occupies an intimate space in their minds. And so then suddenly you can be in there along with their family in the same channels, you know, in the same part of their phone. And the phone is starting to represent a real landscape, right? Neat. So I, I really, I like that point a lot, Doug, about WhatsApp. Any other thoughts on engagement? I showed them Blue Canoe and they love it. It's just a matter of getting them engaged. <laughs> so it's coming. <laughs> so, so the way you've just used that word engaged to me is something about this bridging, this sense of, of watching the show versus being in the show, right? Yeah. It's, it's the difference between being, yeah, I, I'm gonna stick with that. I'll make that short, Aviva. Well, well the thing is, is that we talk a lot about active engagement techniques when we talk about pedagogy. And the whole idea is that the students have to be doing rather than, stand, rather than being bystanders, okay? Yeah. So, so to be actively engaged, means that they are participating consciously and perhaps even un unconsciously, okay, in whatever, in whatever it is that you want them to participate in. Um, and if they're only bystanders, then they're not going to make any real progress. So they have to be engaged and they have to be actively engaged. That's right. And to talk a little bit more about uh, between Aviva and what Jennifer was saying as well, I find you have kind of two levels of engagement. There's that curiosity and, and they want to know more or they're asking questions. But I, I love when I, I do get a question and I don't answer it and I turn to the class. Who can help our classmate? Uh, or who thinks that this answer is correct or not correct? And then somebody else is able to come in and, and now they uh, add to that level of engagement because they're sharing their knowledge and, and it's not just coming from uh, perhaps me and they're explaining it from their experiences and, and, and working together. So I think engagement, uh, not just a solo, but it also we can see that the group dynamics. I think the other thing is um, for those students who are the bystanders, um, who are a little bit, you know, unengaged, I guess is the word, um, we, 
we need to make sure that within the curriculum, within the, the material that we're offering and the topics, and I think this is where Blue Canoe can come into play, is we need to give them buy-in. We have to provide a reason to come in and start engaging with us. And you know, um, if they're not, then I really think it, it behooves us to take a look at what we're providing and it, is there any kind of a hook for them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Any other thoughts there? I wanted to share, we, we actually have uh, had two guests today slated and Chelsea um, Herkman sends her regrets. She needed to, to change the plan. So she's not here today, but she did want me to just share a couple of images that uh, might also get us thinking about engagement. And especially because she's uh, teaching K through 12. Um, some of the younger grades, in fact, grades three, four, five. Um, and so I thought I'd just show a couple of images before we then invite Aviva to share what they're doing in their IEP there at Florida Atlantic University. Uh, with Chelsea, um, she has, I'm just going to kind of pull up this, this one photo here. This is a good one. Um, let's see. This is what she was, she's been doing with her students. And I will change that to slideshow view. So she started off uh, the year thinking, you know, one way to engage students is just by having them spend time with their names with one another. And so she utilized the what color is your name activity uh, just to invite them into that space to, to suddenly, you know, to recognize, wow, this activity is for me. It's about me and my name. Um, and this, this whole thing, this color thing might be for me. Um, so she was teaching online. Actually, this was a hybrid course. So it was uh, both uh, online and face-to-face -face in a schoolroom. Uh, she had all of those folks in the same setting at the same time. And these were the students that she had. And I thought it's just such a beautiful image to, to realize these are tied to real people. And um, some of them are like you'd expect, like Derek. And there's no underlining. Don't let that bother you. It's just, it's, this is used, uh, this is, um, what is this tool called? It's not Jamboard. 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 Yeah, Jamboard doesn't allow yeah. underlining. So, you know, we can't let that bother us. But um, for the most part, it probably doesn't bother us here, except maybe that really long name in the upper right. <laughs> Yalushka. I think that works. La Yalushka, right? Yalushka. That's a good guess. Um, but there are a couple surprises here that she was able to unearth and, and bring to the fore. Any surprises for you all as you look at this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, down, down at the bottom, the Gabriel, what I would say, Gabriel. Uh -huh. Gabriel, right. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. so if, you know, if that student was on my list, they, I'd just be calling him Gabriel. Right, right. Gabriel. Andrea. Yeah, you know, this is Andrea, I mean, this, Andrea. Yeah, isn't that great? And, and there's Andrea also, right? That would be a pretty common pronunciation, Andrea. But I think, or, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but instead, she says what? Andrea. 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 Yeah, Andrea. Andrea. And a ladies. And then I think this one really wins, though. <laughs> right? And so what she was able to do with that, and here's the engagement part that I just found really interesting. If you look carefully at the bottom of the glass part of the door, she posted everybody's name with their color vowel and the underline. Mm. Now, let's talk about this in terms of engagement, because the first part was the learners engage with color vowel and their names and they're engaged in the lesson. But this second part to me is it's very it's profound because now what it's outward facing, right? And I just um, love how, yeah, go ahead. Someone was about to say, who's going to stop by, you know, this door, it, the students, but who else? All of those administrators, every, every person who works at that school, the other kids, the other teachers, and suddenly we know that it's a Macy's and not Amasis, this one right here in the middle, or um, this is Andrea, or this is Ian, right? And then over up here is, is me again. Um, not me, but the student me, right? And, <laughs> Atima, and so forth. So I just, I love this door. Uh, it just makes me think so much about that piece of engagement that's engaging with your school. 
and not just in your lesson and not just with your teacher, but part of your community right around you. So that's it. any thoughts there? Where'd she get the stickers? <laughs> I think she printed those out, but you know, now we have all kinds of access. Uh, stickers, red right? bubble, huh? Red bubble is a great place to go. Um, so if you go to our shop at colorval.com slash shop, little product placement, uh, we do have a banner for our merch and other kind of print objects gallery in a place called Redbubble. And we have everything from uh, printable stickers to magnets to all kinds of other wonderful design products uh, there with Color Valve for the classroom. Wonderful. You know, um, yeah. I just say that I think that Chelsea's psychology, use of psychology is also profound because in using the names, okay, then she, what she's doing is she's lowering the effective barrier. And the, sort of like the effective barrier is, is that barrier which creates fear and anxiety and disables the ability to learn, okay? It's that fight or flight. So by having these stickers, by, by the kids identifying themselves, as, oh, this is my color, this is for me. She's opening a door, she's lowering that effective barrier yeah. and she's creating space for more learning. So this is indeed, a. I mean, I love it. I think that's fantastic. Mm. It's yeah. exciting. It is. It's very exciting. And yeah, to have your face, you have your name right there in front of the door and everybody now knows how to say it. Right. So that's it, it kind of helps them identify this as their space as well as they're walking into the room. Now it, it it's, you know, it's been marked with their name. So they, uh, they own it as well. And, and that and it lowers that anxiety level as well. Right. Because, I mean, they're coming probably to her room um, and it can be a little alienating because, you know, I have to go here instead of being with the rest of my class for language arts or whatever it is. That's very common in, in uh, elementary school situations. And so, you know, it, it helps them make feel, create their own little community. Absolutely. Yeah, so What Color Is Your Name is, is an engaging activity. Literally, it engages and is engaging uh, for learners. If you haven't given that a try, you can find a, a clear outline of that in our book, The Color Bell Approach. Um, but let's go ahead and move along. And I'd like to invite Aviva, and um, as Chris said, she's an observing guest, uh, but the two of you are from Florida Atlantic University. Um, you have you know, a real, I've, I've been watching your strategies from the side, and I just see a consistent, uh, explicit effort to engage students. And I thought everybody here would enjoy hearing about what you've been doing there. Nice to think that we have strategies. Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> um, let me just go ahead and share if I may. Um, just to give a little bit of background information, um, I first encountered Colorval at the TESOL uh, convention of Atlanta in 2019. And Karen, and I don't know if Jennifer was there or not, but I remember Karen was there in the big hall. There was a Colorval table and there were lots of, you know, brightly colored charts. And I went over to have a little look-see and I went, hmm, this looks really interesting. But I thought, hmm, this is for elementary school. It's for beginners. How would I use this in my you know, English for academic purposes, university classroom, yeah, and, I, and I walked away. Now, the thing is that it kept niggling at me, and it was a combination of genuine, what, genuinely wanting to know what this was about, and my absolute disdain and hatred for the IPA, and I hope I'm not offending anybody here, okay? <laughs> um, I want to hear somebody say, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can see Dr. Barr's not here, thank goodness for that, but you know, but it was a combination of, of me struggling to teach pronunciation and, uh, and this, this kind of, what have they created, okay, um, that, that made me keep on checking in till eventually Karen said, look, you keep on coming on our website, perhaps you should, you should hurry up and sign up for a course, which fortunately um, I did. Thank goodness I did because our program has benefited um, greatly from the Colorval methodology. Um, and uh, we've been implementing a whole program since October 21. So it's not that long that we've been implementing a whole program. Um, all of our faculty are trained to some degree or another 
in Color Val. Some of us did the basics course. Um, new adjuncts do at present do the fast course, um, and I'm doing various courses as I go along. Um, and we use the Color Val not only in our speaking and listening pronunciation classes, but also in our reading and writing and grammar classes. So um, we found, though, that the color vowel, engage, or engagement with the color vowel goes beyond the classroom, beyond what the teachers do in the classroom, okay, and beyond, you know, our, our, our use of, of, of the chart within the classroom. Um, and uh, kind of like my very, very creative and brilliant and long-suffering colleague, Christine, and I sat together and she's very patient, I have to tell you. We sat together and thought, right, how can we get this moving beyond the classroom? I know, let's create a competition. Um, our students are very competitive. They come from all over the world um, and they like to get stuck in. So we came up with the notion of a, of a September, of a red pepper September color vowel student competition. I don't know why I've got happy holidays in there. Just ignore that. Let me get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> and um, we, we sort of, we ran it for several weeks and we asked students to come to our notice board and I'll show it to you in a moment um, to find red pepper words and to post with their name and to underline the stress. So the whole idea here was to see, can they identify a color? Can they identify the stress? Um, and because we have a lot of Spanish speaking students and also Arabic speaking students, you know, that, that, that the difference between the, the E and the E and the E, we wanted to see, okay, um, if there would be any recurring errors, et cetera, et cetera. So this was towards the end of our three weeks competition. As you can see, everybody was engaged. Now we currently have just over 90 students in the program. We had a bit more last term. Um, Chris created the board um, we, we divided it into classes. And as you can see, from high beginner to, to upper intermediate, there was complete engagement. And it wasn't that the students came and posted a word here or a word there. They came and they posted and they made lists and they stole from one another. And they came to complain because somebody had taken their word and put it under their, under a different class's name. And it was like, oh my God. So Viva, are, are, let me ask a question. Is this board divided up into classes? Is that what we see here? Yes. Right. Um, Chris, do you want to perhaps chime in here? The, the board is a standard bulletin board size. And sometimes we have anywhere from five to six classes running at a time. And we, we take that and divide it. You can't tell by any means now that it's organized because it's just covered in the sticky notes. And so they, they end up uh, adding on, taping down and going on. But what, what I want to add is we're on a university campus and these students take classes all over our campus. So they might be half a mile maybe at most away from where this board is some might be you know in another building but they all nobody has a class really where this board is they have to make an effort to come and post because this is in our administrative areas and i think that kind of just adds to, to their their engagement level that they're not just stepping outside their classroom door popping on a note and going back into class and i see them walking after class as I'm driving off campus they're walking with their with their classmates going to put their their notices on wow wow I love that I love the idea that they're walking somewhere and it both proves and creates that engagement and it seems that pizza is a very strong incentive because this is all <laughs> in the name of a pizza party maybe the party uh, <laughs> yeah now as you can see I mean there are tons and tons of words here we were interested to see though yeah what kind of words would they post would there be errors um what would the high beginners post what would the upper intermediate post and what we found well, first of all there were hardly any errors at all and chris and i put our heads together and said aha 
the blue canoe <laughs> is in use here, okay? Uh -huh. um, because the uh -huh. thing is, we said to the students, if you post a word and, and it's not the correct color, you won't get a point. If you post a word and the stress, okay, is incorrect, you won't get a point. So we had something like two or three errors out of, I mean, there must have been thousands of words there. Um, and we came to the conclusion that the only way they could have done this correctly is if they'd gone into the Blue Canoe Dictionary and checked. Mm -hmm. So that was number one. Number two, we noticed that there were some students who just posted random words, okay, where you know, there's no particular patterns. And um, so if you look at Olivia's and um, Carla's, um, you know, these are words that, they, that they've come across, that they've identified as being red pepper words. That's fine. And then if you go here to Mohammed, you begin to see that he's written down successor, successive, successfully, successively. So, okay, he, he might be taking this from a dictionary. I don't know where he's taking it from. It doesn't matter. He is identifying some kind of pattern and he's associating it with a red pepper sound. Um, here, if we go uh, to the purple, to the purple post-it notes, you can see that the student um, is, has got down cell, shell, bell, belt, melt. It doesn't matter, okay, um, whether these are particularly exciting words or not. Once again, the student has identified that there are some clusters, okay, of letters that actually then have this particular sound that follow. So the students are extremely engaged. And it's, it's not kind of like passive engagement, it's proactive engagement. Um, Christine, once the competition was finished and we announced the class and uh, they had their pizza party and boy, would they, they want their pizza party. You know, they came and they said, when will we have it? And I have to tell you that um, my office looks onto the corridor where this bulletin board is. And I had students during lunchtime after class, like throngs of students fighting to post. Chris then created, um, she took, she took um, some, some of the more interesting words or some of the, or some words where there were different spelling variations, the different spelling patterns, and she created a spelling exploration. Um, and all students in classes then had to do the spelling exploration so they could actually identify the patterns. Um, and we kind of found a couple of errors that sort of we said, right, these were amongst the words, it's not quite right. What color should they be? Where should the stress be, etc. cetera? Um, so that was our first successful competition. We ran another extremely successful competition of, I'll, I'll go quickly, I promise, um, over the, the holiday period. Um, Chris came up with the uh, Olive Sock Happy Holidays. And as you can see, once again, it was cutthroat. Um, they were devising strategies uh, of how they would post, how they would make sure that we would see all of the words. You know, they, they printed out little slips of paper. So much so that we said, how are we, go this is too much. How are we going to measure this? Um, and as you can see from the pictures here, uh, we also promised them extra credit if they took a selfie in front of the board, okay, posting their word. Um, and I hope that you can see that it's not just us saying, yes, they were very engaged, they were engaged. They, you know, they were putting their words up. They were anxious to get their words correct. They wanted to show us that they could identify these words. They could identify the stress um, and that they knew what they were doing. And once again, Chris created a, yet another spelling exploration with various spelling patterns. Now, this was an interesting one. We created a black cat candy competition just before Halloween. And it wasn't quite as successful. And it wasn't quite as successful because the prize wasn't a pizza party. That mm. was one thought. It was come and post your note, come post your word and take a piece of candy every time you post. Huh. Mm. But what was interesting was that there was engagement from the lower levels, okay, with black cat candy. So there was something about this sound that they can produce okay that engaged them and and so it was less intimidating for them to come and post well the others weren't so bothered and i just wanted to say by the way i'm just going to go back quickly here because i forgot this is very interesting um, the happy holidays olive salt competition we did a focus group 
And uh, what came out of the focus group was that the students felt that they, it was much easier for them to produce um, front vowel words, okay? And they use, these, these are the terms that they use. And they said, we find the middle and the back vowels hard, and we find all of salt particularly difficult. So even though this was a particularly difficult word for them to pronounce, they were so engaged that they went looking for words. Um, you can see Zach here, by the way, this was just before our Halloween party, beside the board in his kilt and his nobly knees. Um, and our upcoming competition, Chris, you can you tell um, Karen and, and our friends about the, our upcoming com competition. We we're going to kick off uh, on Tuesday. We just started classes this past this week. And so we let our students settle in and we'll have a new contest starting on Tuesday. And we, we took to heart our, our feedback from our focus groups. And they said that back the back mouth of the, vo the vowels. So we're doing a rose boat. And uh, again, this board is is in a little hallway in our administrative offices. And I, I went to go set it up. And I can't tell you how many students said, oh, can I help you? Oh, Miss Christine, can I help? And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Hold on. And this one student, he, uh, Ahmad, he would not go away. He was holding my papers, looking at the papers. And finally, I had to let go of my OCD tendencies. And I said, here, you go ahead and, and, and develop. This is what I, I want to do. And, and he, he got into it. His, his friend, who's brand new, uh, just uh, has been in the, the States for a couple of, of days, wanted to get involved. And, and, and you can see now now they know what it is that the returning students and, and, and they're so excited and want to be a part of it, even when they're not posting a, a, a word. Absolutely. Um, just just before and like we finish here, I wanted to show you two more slides. This um, is a, a picture that one of our students last term in Zach's class actually she created a family tree. They were asked to, to, you know, to create a family tree just to give information about themselves. There was no mention of color vowel. This wasn't a color vowel exercise. However, Zach had been doing color vowel with them. And uh, Orlana turned up and she turned up with this beautiful piece of, of work. Now, there are lots of things here that could be tweaked, okay? And, um, you know, the, the olive sock word is not in caps and we, we we tell them we want when you talk about um the color of a word and put it in caps so that you can differentiate but all of the all of the names here okay are have been given their color whether it's red pepper or purple shirt or olive sock or green tea this wasn't zach's prodding this was the student being exposed to color val in his class and saying "Ooh, i can use color val Okay, to, to, to show the names of my family. Um, so, I mean, absolutely beautiful. And um, so that was, that was one example of student engagement. Another example- Could, of you, student could you show us that image a little closer up so we can see? Yeah. That me... is just fascinating. Hard to see. So- Oh, so like Francis Francesco at the bottom, the bottom, that one, the blue apple at the bottom of the trunk that says Francisco and it's red. Oh, it's, Francesco. it's not Francisco, it's Francesco. Francisco. Okay. Neat. And wow. Carolina, it's olive sock. And it's interesting to see that most of the names are either olive sock or green tea. Um, Fascinating. So, you know, and I, I, you know, I mean, who knows if it's entirely correct or, or not, it doesn't matter. This student is independently trying to associate okay right. color with sound um, and is doing so as a strategy and as a method to help her categorize and um, so this was an absolutely beautiful piece of work the the next piece of work and um, once again um, this was Giannina also I think uh, I think it might have been Alicia's class I can't remember whose class it was and um, she decided independently that she was going to, they were talking about minimal pairs and they weren't, they weren't using um, color vowel necessarily. But she decided that she was going to, to you know, to categorize her, the minimal pairs the best way that she could. 
And um, there's lots of issues here with, with, with what she's done and how she's done it. But nevertheless, in her mind, the color vial is a methodology, it's a strategy, it's a support system. She can use this to help her pronounce what she wants to pronounce. And because, um, because it, this, this was produced independently, okay, this teacher is saying, go home and make a chart. And then it shows that there's real student engagement and that they like this method. It makes sense to them. They yeah. enjoy it. They can be artistic. And um, so, you know, this, this is yet another example. Finally, um, you know, Chris and I have to sit together and think about where we take our competitions, because if we do the same kind of thing all the time, it's going to get very boring for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're thinking that perhaps at some point our next stage is to begin to use the Profity Pyramid and to begin to look for colour and stress within thought groups, somehow or other, to, to bring the competition round, round to thought groups um, and focus word and cut and the color of the focus word and the stress within the within the focus word the peak vowel um, and who knows maybe we'll able we'll, we'll be able to add intonation at some point as well so you know we we, we have a lot to think about and um, we've got a lot of, of a lot a, a lot more activities to, to, to you know to create but in the meantime I think that that you know, our students have been exposed to this as a whole program for one semester. I think the results are, are pretty exciting. Sorry, Christine. Uh, I just wanted to add, uh, when you said what's next too, we've also talked about incorporating Blue Canoe and making it a competitive element. Our, our students really like that gaming competitive element, but I, as Blue Canoe offers it individually, but if they see, well, so-and-so has this many points and I only have this many. So we're, we're putting our heads together and thinking about, uh, and I jokingly said earlier this week, we might need another bulletin board. We need a Blue Canoe bulletin board and we've got our color vowel bulletin board to, so we can start uh, getting the students uh, visibility for their efforts on that end. And more money for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> a pizza budget, definitely. Well, I thought, um, wonderful. Uh, there's so many great ideas here. And I just, I wanted to share one other that I think you're really gonna resonate with. And this came to us years ago um, at a time when we weren't having these kind of discussions, but Shirley's gonna remember this. This was a group from Central Michigan University who um, they posted this on Twitter. And this is Courtney King and they had dressed like a color vowel day oh, for Halloween. So this is all right around, you know, this is Halloween here. And the faculty came, um, this, this is one picture. There were several others, but this one person came dressed as the chart. And then other people came in, in some other photos, they were dressed as one color vowel. Um, so this woman had little tea bags all over her and she was green tea and so forth. So you can just, I, I thought this was an example of just uh, motivating faculty or, you know, not motivating, awesome. but um, enlivening the, you know, the workplace with this thing that they found. They did this all on their own and sent this to us. <laughs> That was amazing. It was amazing. Um, so, you know, that's that's another thought there is. And, and we did also have a group in um Indonesia that on their own, these teachers decided to have um, dressed like a color vowel day um, and they all wore different color saris. It was really beautiful. Um, so anyway, but other thoughts, I mean, this is great at the program level, just thinking of using color vowel as a way to, again, to leverage uh, engagement in the program. Other thoughts that anybody wants to share there or questions that we have for Aviva or Christine? One thought that I had, I just shared it with, um... Aviva is um, if you're looking to go beyond the word level and you want to go into those super segmentals and work on things like thought groups and and intonation is uh, and you know using uh, color vowel and blue canoe in preparation would be to do have a readers theater night um, and you know each group in each class can prepare a different. Um, uh, play and present that um, and give out awards. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I've done with my students as a uh, in sort of a project based um, uh, 
curriculum was um, Pecha Kuchas. And uh, Pecha Kucha is a uh, um, presentation form and um, it does use uh, PowerPoints, but there are there's no text. Yeah. And each the slides advance automatically. And so you're forced to speak um, uh, consistently to to stay with your slides. And it it um, the wonderful thing about uh, using Pecha Kucha with a, uh, a second language class is that it, um, it requires practicing and practice and practice till you so you can get up there and just speak without you know reading or referring to you know bullet points. And you know Pecha Kucha's uh, nights are competitions all over the world. I think they're very popular in Japan and in Asia. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so Pecha Kucha is P-E-C, I'll, I'll type it. <laughs> I put it in the chat there for you. I mean, one, okay. one of the things that we did um, at the end of last term, we had for our low advanced students, we had a three minute thesis competition. Um, and uh, where, where sort of the content was important, but even more important was the delivery. And once again, the color val methodology, coupled with Blue Canoe were the tools that we used to arrive at their at their beautiful deliveries, we were we were mm -hmm. at, we were just stunned by what they managed to achieve. So so yes, Jennifer, you're at, you're absolutely right. Those kind of speaking activities, spot on. And, and I will we will look into this into this yeah. petra kucha, right, Chris? Yeah. They do they do have competitions. I mean, it's it's sort of like um, what is that group uh, that does public speaking? Um, um, Toastmasters. Yeah, yeah, so they're like pet Toastmaster groups. There's Pecha Kucha groups, and they get together. And I've used it a little bit in class, but I, I haven't used. I've used it with the lower levels in particular, but I haven't done it with the timing. I've just had them where at least they know that they can use a, a visual and, and move from there without reading because that that helps them get their confidence. But I like that timing element with it. I use them with very advanced students. Um, they had the basically the whole semester. We went step by step in preparing it, and um, you know, so it, it a true pachacucha requires you to speak for I think it's six minutes and forty seconds, and so you know it's it's no small task, and you have to be very familiar and comfortable with your topic and your and your speech, and um, uh, you know, so we worked a lot on you know, saying what you want to say in a short amount of time, you know, keeping on topic, um, being, you know, having a hook at the beginning. And, you know, so you get into a lot of um, sort of uh, speech and presentation skills at the same time working on the language. And, and I let my students do whatever they wanted. So I had realtors who were, who did presentations on why you should have me sell your house or, um, you know, they would do uh, presentations on, you know, build up your credit score. Um, I had one guy who talked about lice because that's what he wanted to study in biology. That was not one I'd want to watch again. Um, but, you know, it only a few of them kind of resorted to the, you know, this is the food in my country kind of thing that we see over and over and over again in, in our classes. But, you know, a lot of them, um, I said, if you have to do a presentation for your, um, uh, a, a content class, this is a great time to produce, you know, do that. So I had business students doing case studies. It, it was really very successful. Fabulous. Can I, can I just add something very briefly, and then I promise you I'll be quiet. Um, I just wanted to say that after each um, competition notice board, we have a folder where we have we collect all of the bits of paper with the teachers' names, um, and we and we we keep it in our color roll competition folder because at some point we will do some proper analysis of the words that they chose and try and come up and try and understand the way their minds are working and why they, they've managed, why they've chosen certain words and what patterns have emerged. So I just wanted to, excuse me, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that sort of that these kind of competitions, they also um, offer an opportunity for continuing research. So, and now I promise you, I will be silent. <laughs>
<laughs> There's no need to be silent. That's this is a wonderful discussion. Um, I wanted to share along the lines of, of what you've been doing with your boards as students are, say, moving from your program into the university and maybe, you know, sort of saying goodbye. We do have um, an online sort of corollary to what you've been doing called What Color Is Your Name? I'm sorry, What Color Do You Hear? Uh, this is the What Color Do You Hear campaign. It's on Facebook. We also have a version of it, probably a more compelling version even on Instagram. And this is where uh, anybody in the group, you can, we have 160 members and it kind of ebbs and flows in terms of activity. Like we'll do a whole campaign and it'll run very actively for a month or two. And lately it's been a little quieter, but it's open all the time. And the user simply posts, I've invited photographers, for example, to post their beautiful photography and then participants tag it uh, as long as well as the, the poster with their own tags. And these are, these are stable tags that you can sort of see up here. Um, it's what color do you hear with a hashtag? And then each color vowel has its own hashtag. And what that allows is for you to pull up and see everything that's been tagged as an olive sock word in this case, right? So here's, and then you can guess, this is the fun part is, um, <laughs> This was, this is Dilnoza who, um, who says orange. And so her whole joke was it's olive sock orange. <laughs> um, but as you, as you come down, your students can basically check their vocabulary and see, you know, ask themselves what, what's olive sock. And there was a discussion here about cicada versus cicada. Um, so anyway, a lot of fun to integrate that with the classroom, especially when you have students who love to take photos. Um, they can post here, and and again, Instagram is probably even the more the more compelling version of that. Uh, so there's a little social media. Um, there was one other to kind of round up what you've done in your program, Aviva, and maybe you've seen this before, um, but I wanted to show you all what a school in Washington State has done in the past. <laughs> yeah, gigantic chart, right? Yeah. So this is this is the hallway chart. Uh, maybe you don't have this kind of real estate, but the students were engaged. I think your boards show more, even more engagement than this, maybe because of the, uh, the competition quality there. Yeah. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on, on what you've seen here? Questions? We have seen engagement just with the chart. And I, I think that's where I'd like to wrap things up with a thought for everybody is don't forget just how spending time with that idea, watching that student who made that, that family tree, for example, that is an example where the, it was so compelling to him that he had to do something with it. And that's what he did with it. Um, please take a moment to take pictures of those things when they happen. We love to see those stories. And it just, it means so much to us when we see that that students are engaging in their ways. You know, this was a, a time in Laura McIndoo's classroom where the students, there were a couple of artists. And so they were in charge of making the color vowel word lists and they did the drawings for them. You know, so you know that they were, they were more present in their learning than they might've been otherwise because of what they drew. Okay. I wanna thank everybody for being here. Hey, we have a couple of neat things coming up. Um, our own Jennifer Campion is going to is giving a workshop in later this month, actually, uh, called Grammaring the Color Vowel Way. If grammaring is not a grammatical term that you know of, <laughs> then you should definitely be there. Uh, but grammaring is not just knowing grammar; it takes grammar on to a new a new level. And uh, and Jennifer, you want to say a sentence or two about that? Yeah, we're hoping to, the, well, this is the first in a series of um, what we're calling, um, you know, half day workshops. And so they'll be from 10 o'clock till two o'clock here in the um, Eastern US time. Uh, so it's a four hour workshop, it's all standalone. And uh, we're going to look at um, grammar a different way, teaching grammar in a different way. And uh, we're going to look at um, structures that are at the beginner level, intermediate, advanced. So there's hopefully be something for everybody. 
and looking at teaching grammar in all contexts. And um, basically, uh, a lot of it will be based on um, Diane Larson Freeman's uh, grammaring book, which is right here, From Grammar to Grammary. If you don't have this book, you might want to look into getting it. It's really, really fantastic. Um, and so we'll be looking at the concepts that she's introduced over the years uh, in regards to that and um, how, uh, how, where the, um, how that meshes with color valve principles, especially with noticing and um, student engagement. Wonderful. Yeah, and it'll be very practical. So if you're looking for yes. new ways to engage, that's precisely what this is all about. We're, we're hoping that you'll walk away with some activities that you can apply in your classroom right away. And what date is this, Jennifer? Uh, it's January 20, I want to say 29th. I believe but that's it's, right. It's on Saturday. It's that Saturday morning. And I've just and posted a link in the chat for you to that event. Oh, right thank here. you. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, and it will be recorded. So if you can't attend, you know, go ahead and register. Anybody who registers will get um, a recorded version of it. We've already had a couple of people say that they uh, they can't make it, but they'll watch the recording. And uh, it's um, you know priced affordably. I think anybody can come. Um, you don't have to be color val trained. So if you have uh, colleagues who are struggling with uh, teaching grammar or love teaching grammar, uh, encourage them, whether they know anything about color vowel or not, um, we, you know, we're going to design the workshop so that anybody could attend. Great. Um, I want to talk about next week. No, two weeks from now, we have another Fridays at five. We are contacting um, tonight and this weekend um, some of our color vowelists who work with speakers of Japanese, and that includes you now, Yuki. Uh, we'll be in touch with you, um, Gabby Academy, and a few others who have extensive experience working with speakers of Japanese and teaching English and English pronunciation to them. So if that is a topic of interest to you, be sure to join us two Fridays from now. Um, we'll be having some, again, some guests with us and share some tips. And I think some of the, the normal suspects will show up as far as L and R and a few other things, but maybe some, also some surprises. Uh, so be, be thinking about that. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. It's just, it's wonderful to see you all again after the long break. We look forward to seeing you at an upcoming class or session, or maybe TESOL Pittsburgh which is coming up. If you're here in North America and plan to go, I think, I think we're going. We have tables. <laughs> Shirley, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> All okay. right. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank